This presentation is a review of our second series on harmony. The main concepts introduced were inversions of triads, expanded four-part writing rules, and practice. We tested the waters of a cantus firmus and wrestled with the round one of first species counterpoint. The concept of inversions revisits the vertical dimension of musical harmony, three-note triads. Roman numerals indicate scale degrees of triad roots now displaced to the upper voices. Arabic figures measure harmonic intervals from bass to upper voices. To write inverted triads in four parts, we have to double one of the tones. We often double the fifth of the second inversion and usually avoid doubling the third of the first inversion. At least, those are the preferred choices for doubling. Also, we avoid doubling the leading tone when it appears in an inverted triad. Figures added to bass notes also indicate the inversion. These are called figured bass or thorough bass figures. Listen to this example. When combined with Roman numerals, base figuring is especially useful in the analysis of harmony and counterpoint. We learned to refine our application of contrary motion. Rather than blindly retaining the common tone in all instances, we try to avoid hidden octaves between any pair of voices, even those involving inner parts. Here's the good and less good. A 6-4 chord will have varying degrees of closure, depending on whether it falls on a downbeat, a tonic, cadential 6-4, or on an upbeat. 6-4 triads that do not fall on the downbeat, and all non-tonic 6-4s, have little feeling of closure. Such non-cadential 6-4 chords serve as a neighboring or passing chords. At this point, we introduced the relative minor mode, particularly the harmonic minor scale. This variant of the scale features a raised seventh scale degree, useful for harmony, especially at cadences. A scale is a relative when it has the same key signature as the major mode. The primary and secondary triads, useful for most chord progressions, rely chiefly on the harmonic minor scale. We introduced the melodic minor scale, incidentally, and that one features a raised sixth and seventh degree for ascending lines, but natural descending. The melodic augmented second interval from sixth to seventh degree of the harmonic minor scale is difficult for a group to sing in tune together. Movement between the five and six chords in minor requires doubling the third of six to sidestep melodic movement of an augmented second in the same voice. Chromatically altered tones in minor, such as the raised seventh scale degree, are indicated in the bass figures with accidentals. This is because the altered tones do not naturally appear in the key signature. When connecting pairs of triads in minor, say 2 to 3, 2 to 5, and others, we apply contrary motion between bass and upper voices, again to avoid instances of the melodic augmented second.
we demonstrated the process of realizing a figured bass progression in four voices. Students were then assigned to transpose the figured bass of this demo to various keys prior to working out the upper voices according to the rules. After a brief summary of root position triads found in both major and harmonic minor scales, we compared the various types of triads contained therein. The major triads, minor triads, diminished, and an augmented triad. Various realizations of the same figured bass line were demonstrated with assignments to transpose and work these out in other keys. The concept of inverted triads was revisited now from the perspective of the minor mode. Additional emphasis on proper doubling of inverted triads was provided notably for the first inversion, along with bass figures representing altered scale tones in the minor mode. As in major, the inverted triads of the minor mode have certain preferences as to doubling, and to which there are exceptions based on proper voice-leading rules. Now in minor, we again highlighted the difference between cadential 6-4 chords and passing 6-4 triads, and the use of prepared tones as well. Finally, we presented a mini-series on the topic of how to create a cantus firmus for use in counterpoint exercises, followed by our first taste of two-part first species counterpoint writing, as outlined in the 18th century treatise on counterpoint, Gradus ad Parnassum, by Johann Josef Fuchs. More joy to follow. Thank you for watching and listening.